another Gentile year has come and gone, and the Lord Jesus Christ has not yet returned. During 2014, it certainly feels like world events that connect to Bible prophecy have intensified, and at the end of the year, geopolitics have been left in a state of unease and tenseness. The signs of the times are slowly coming into focus and give us indications like never before that soon the Lord will be here. This is Matt Davies joining you for the Bible in the News. We know that God's purpose is with the earth. We are told, for example, that all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh in Numbers 14 verse 21. The Lord Jesus Christ taught his followers to pray to God in the Lord's Prayer for, quote, Thy kingdom to come, thy will to be done in earth as it is in heaven, end quote, Matthew 6, verse 10. Having a part in that coming kingdom is the very essence of the truth, of the hope contained in the Bible. The gospel message shows how that men and women can have their sins forgiven and become acceptable to God through the work of Christ. The Bible teaches us that Jesus will soon return to sit on the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. And we read of how when he does return, he will conduct a resurrection of those who are responsible and accountable, and a judgment will be conducted. The mechanism for acceptance is based on a firm belief in the gospel, and then the demonstration of this belief in baptism and a life of humble service. Those who are acceptable will live and reign with him for a thousand years in his kingdom when the earth will be filled with peace and righteousness, after which all will be given up to the glory of God. The Bible gives us a clear vision of what the world will look like just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. The prophecies of Revelation 16 verses 12 to 16 Ezekiel 38, Daniel 11, Joel 3 and Zechariah 14 all harmonise to tell us of the uniting of the nations to battle against Israel, God's people. The ancient names are given for the territories of Russia, Iran, Northern Africa and Europe as being the aggressors under the leadership of a character called Gog in Ezekiel 38 verses 1 through 9. We read of how a few nations are not part of this invasion, those associated with Britain or Tarshish and the Gulf states as recorded in Ezekiel 38 verse 13. This week we would briefly like to review the key themes in the news stories which we have picked up on during the year to show that the world is indeed on the brink of the crisis foretold of in the Bible and that it will not be long now before Christ returns. It has indeed been a busy year, and Russia has not been far away from the headlines each month. A ruthless and aggressive Russia has once again flexed its muscles, its military spending has again increased, and this year we witnessed the annexation of Crimea on the 21st of March, and the increased aggression by Russia on eastern Ukraine. One commentator recently wrote that in 2014, great Russian chauvinism returned with a vengeance. Why has Russia been so aggressive to those in Ukraine? Well, it's because they started to look west to the EU for support, rather than east to Russia. The rest of the world looked on helpless as Russia took over the sp and sponsored the unrest against the Ukrainian government. President Putin was recorded to have breathed out all sorts of threats. For example, on the 2nd of September, a headline in The Guardian read, quote, Putin claims Russian forces could conquer Ukraine capital in two weeks, end quote. On the 29th of August, The Telegraph had a headline, quote, Vladimir Putin, don't mess with a nuclear armed Russia, end quote. This aggressive, arrogant, and totalitarian style regime is exactly what we expect to eventually be embodied in Gog, the one who would lead Russia and its allies into conflict with Israel according to Bible prophecy. 
Although it is unclear whether Putin himself will be this one, he is certainly setting the president. In reaction to this aggression, and in particular because of an event in July where a civilian jetliner was shot down over territory held by pro-Russian rebels, the West made economic sanctions against Russia. These, along with a slack in the demand for oil, have caused the Russian economy to crash in the latter quarter of the year. Putin, although still a popular leader in Russia, will have to take drastic steps if he is to remain unchallenged. As if nothing is done, commentators are warning that real damages will be done to the average person's living standards in Russia. One way of increasing the value of Russian oil is to begin a war. Some astounding headlines were published last week suggesting Russia is considering just that, starting a war with none other than the Israelis. Under a headline of, quote, official, Russia plotting to start war on Israel, end quote, American news network WND on the 20th of December reported, quote, Russia is preparing a contingency plan to prompt Hezbollah and possibly the regime of Syrian President Ashar al-Hassad into a direct military conflict with Israel according to a French official who has been appraised of the situation, end quote. Another headline on the same story was published by the International Business Times, quote, Russia plans war on Israel, Moscow to push Hezbollah, Assad regime into direct confrontation. These are staggering headlines, which show that there is no love between Russia and Israel, and that conflict could be on the horizon. Therefore, as we enter 2015, we are poised on the brink of a Russian crisis, which could bring about war in 2015. How this may develop, we are unsure. But it is possible that the sparks of conflict could soon ignite the great Battle of Armageddon, which will soon engulf the Middle East before Christ returns to save God's people of Israel. Also this year, the Syrian war got worse. According to the BBC, there are now approximately 3.2 million refugees from the conflict. And the vacuum created by the war and the failure of Iraq to produce a government which represented all aspects of its society allowed for the rise of ISIS this year. The Islamic State are extreme Sunni Muslims seeking to establish a caliphate where Shia law is used to govern the territories it rules. The group are ruthless and bloodthirsty, and the news was full of the horror of beheadings and terrorist messages that ISIS conducted. Now ISIS are of interest to us because they now hold the current territory of ancient Assyria. In Micah chapter 5 there is a prophecy about our times, the time when Israel returns to their land. During this time we read in Micah 5 of an invading force, the same force it seems as that of Gog in Ezekiel chapter 38. In Micah 5 this force is called Assyria. Gog then, it seems, must conquer the area currently controlled by ISIS. It is possible that the latter day prophecy in Numbers 24 relates to this. In Numbers 24 verses 23 to 24 we read of an invading force which comes with ships to afflict Israel, or Eber as it's known of in the prophecy. We are also told the force, quote, shall afflict Ashur, end quote, or Assyria. Piecing these prophecies together then, it seems that there's possibly a hint in the Bible of the Gogian confederacy coming down to attack Isis and to take over its territory so that Gog becomes the latter-day Assyrian. To see the rise of an aggressive power in the area of ancient Assyria then is of great interest to us as we watch the signs of the times. This year we have seen headlines about the aggression that ISIS has towards Russia. For example on the 3rd of September the International Business Times had a headline quote ISIS tells Vladimir Putin we are coming to Russia to free Chechnya end quote. 
The Independent had a headline of a similar nature on the 10th of October. Quote, Chechnyan ISIS fighters under Omar al-Shashini threaten to take fight to Putin, end quote. If Russia did decide to swarm down to take out ISIS, the West would support such a move and possibly even lend a hand, providing or producing the union of the nations we might expect from Ezekiel chapter 38. However things might pan out, one thing is sure, and that is how volatile the Middle East is at this time as we end 2014. With so much happening in just a year in the region, we wonder what the situation might look like at the end of 2015. We now turn our attention to Europe. Europe is still reeling from the international economic crash. And this has triggered more calls for not only a more robust monetary union, but also for a political union to underpin it. This uniting of the nations of Europe is, of course, what Bible students expect. The western side of the Roman Empire is described in both Daniel and Revelation as a beast, In Revelation 17, we read of how this beast revives in the time just before Christ returns and that the kings of the earth, quote, shall give their power and strength unto the beast, end quote, Revelation 17, verse 13. And it is this that we see occurring in Europe today. On the beast of Revelation 17 is a harlot woman a symbol of a religious community who have not been faithful to God's true ways. To sit on something, in symbol, is to control and direct it. It is therefore of note that this year, on the 25th of November, the leader of the religious community of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, addressed the European Union. His humanistic message of unity was there for all to see as he sought to guide the beast through the leaders that he addressed. In Ezekiel 38, though, we note that the Tarshish powers of Britain are not allied with the Russian, Eastern, African and European invaders. This indicates that Britain will not be part of any European Union which involves armies. They are independent and are to be found in the time leading up to Christ's return, trading in the area of the Gulf, because the prophet records that they are there with Sheba and Dedan, ancient names of the area of the Gulf. It is very interesting, therefore, to note that this year has again seen Britain taking steps to back out of Europe. The rise of the United Kingdom Independence Party, or UKIP, and its charismatic leader, Nigel Farage, has been unprecedented. This year the party has taken Westminster seats and now has two members of parliament. It has one key policy, to leave the European Union, and this has been gaining support across Britain. The popularity of this has put pressure on the main political parties, with the Conservatives promising a referendum in 2015. David Cameron, the Conservative British Prime Minister, has promised the British people that he will renegotiate Britain's position in Europe and will put this to the British people before the referendum. By all accounts, any negotiations seem to have failed thus far, causing some distress. We've witnessed headlines such as, quote, Britain will not remain in Europe, come what may, David Cameron says. End quote. Also, quote, David Cameron, I am ready to lead Britain out of Europe if migrant reforms fail, end quote, both from the Telegraph in November this year. With an exit now a real possibility, Britain is now looking elsewhere to trade its wares. Significantly, it is focused on ramping up trade with the Gulf states. In March, we had reports from the government that, quote, trade minister brings UK business delegation to the Gulf, end quote. Later in the year, we had, quote, UK trade envoy to Saudi Arabia. Kingdom's economy has huge potential outside oil sector, end quote. Then in early December, the news came that, quote, 
Britain returns east of Suez with permanent Royal Navy base in the Gulf, end quote, reported by the Telegraph on the 6th of December. It is easy to see then how this year the formation of the nations in accordance with Bible prophecy is indeed well on track. We finally now turn our attention on events in Israel this past year. The big story here was the breakdown in peace talks and the war with Gaza, which was sparked by the murder of three Israeli teenagers and the increased launches of rockets from the Gaza Strip. On July the 8th, Israel launched Operation Protective Edge, a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip in which the IDF destroyed a sophisticated network of military tunnels, which was going to be used by the terrorist organisation Hamas to invade Israel. As usual, the Western media reported in a biased way against Israel, emphasising the Palestinian casualties and destruction and painting Israel as the great aggressor in the conflict, despite the rockets which had been raining down on Israel's civilian population. Although the tensions are still obviously still present, the conflict has now died down. However, the presence of a hostile force on the coast of Israel is to be expected by the Bible student. In Joel 3, as part of a prophecy of a great invasion of Israel, additional supporting nations are given a special condemnation. In verse 4, quote, Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? End quote. Tyre and Zidon are in the north of Israel, in modern-day Lebanon, where Hezbollah currently operates. The coasts of Palestine clearly relate to the Gaza Strip and the area that Hamas controls. The fact that God has brought back Israel to their land and that there are hostile nations left in these areas shows the power and foresight of the Almighty. We are told in Ezekiel 38 why the invasion takes place. In verse 12 we read that Gog comes against the people and to take a spoil. Therefore, we would expect to see international hatred of the Jews in Israel and also for Israel to become wealthy. And these two things have indeed been in the news this year. In terms of wealth, Israel has increased across the board with reports of its economy growing faster than many develop, developed nations this year. In January, the Pipeline and Gas Journal reported, quote, Israel on the cusp of an energy revolution. There are reports that Israel now possesses the second largest deposits of oil shale in the world outside of the United States, end quote. Significantly, Israel is now exporting gas, which is expected to bring in an influx of economic growth. One amazing report was that, again, a huge gas find has been found this year. Haaretz, had this headline on the 14th of December, quote, Major new gas found find off Israel's Mediterranean coast, end quote. The new field has been called Royi, and it is thought to be the largest of the recent finds off the coast of Israel. Indeed, the wealth of Israel is set to increase, as we would expect from prophecy. In terms of the hatred of Israel, this has indeed increased. The war in Gaza exposed a huge hatred of Israel in the West, with boycotts of Israeli produce and a huge rise in anti-Semitic attacks. In July, the magazine Newsweek had a picture on its cover of a Jewess holding a suitcase. The headline read, Exodus, why Europe's Jews are fleeing once again. The article within reported on an event in Paris, quote, The mob howled for vengeance. The missiles raining down on the synagogue walls as the worshippers huddled inside. It was a scene from Europe in the 1930s. Except, this was eastern Paris on the evening of July 13th, 2014. Thousands had gathered to demonstrate against the Isra Israeli bombardment of Gaza, but the protests soon turned violent, and against Jews in general. One of those trapped told Israeli television that the streets outside were 
like an infatada, the Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation, end quote. This is typical of increased hatred faced by Jews in Europe this year. Inside Israel, increased attacks by Palestinians upon Israelis were looked on with indifference by the Western media. In November, when two Palestinians broke into a synagogue with axes and hacked to death four Jews at prayer, one headline from CBC News read, quote, Jerusalem police fatally shoot two after apparent synagogue attack, end quote. The reporting is obviously anti-Israel, with the focus again painting Jews as the aggressor. And the controversy of the building of Israeli settlements on the West Bank has continued to cause international outrage. In September, the Guardian has a headline, quote, Huge new Israeli settlement in the West Bank condemned by US and the UK. Also in September, the Telegraph reported, quote, Five EU nations complained to Israel over land grab, end quote. So we see the scene is being set for the great conflict revealed by the prophets to take place. And there ends our review. The world is indeed on the edge of crisis. The signs that Christ is at the door have intensified. What will next year hold? Will it be more of the same? Or will it be the year so longed for of the return of Christ from heaven? The important thing must surely be our reaction to these things in the midst of an apathetic and ignorant society. The exhortation of the Lord Jesus is most relevant for us to be reminded of. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth 